Uh, welcome to and also where uh, basically all Kirk and I do, Kirk being Kirk and I being John, uh, both from Faith Alliance Church, but all we do is we talk for a while and then we just hit record and we continue talking. So this is really kind of a podcast mid-conversation. Sure. In fact, we could rename the podcast and also colon mid-conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave the colon out of it. <laughs> every every sentence needs a colon and also comma mid conversation that doesn't work as well okay anyway we are um in mid conversation in the book of romans do you like that segue that was a very good segue if i do say so myself uh where we are talking through um we talked through the previous week's sermon and we do that for kind of our little local audience for anyone who's interested in listening to um get a little bit of a wider perspective on the scripture a little bit of a wider perspective on uh how do we actually talk about this stuff in the world what does it actually mean is there application for it so that's what we do and why we do and we are um actually kind of veering the end of romans we're in romans 14 today uh, that's what I preached on this past Sunday, the, um, uh, the fourth. And so, uh, so Kirk and I will pick up Romans 14, where we are told not to destroy the work of God for the sake of food. <laughs> Which is probably the best line ever for any potluck. That is, yeah, that, that, that could go, that could, we can make a banner out of that. <laughs> that's it. From now on, anytime a bunch of casserole dishes and hot pot, pots show up, that's what we're saying. Don't destroy the Slow word of God for the sake of food. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that's all. Well, what so so when you think about Romans fourteen, I think you know there's a there's a there's a lot. There is I would say two things. There's a lot of application for Romans fourteen about how to live together in relationship with each other. Oh yeah. There's also that's... a lot of misperception in Romans fourteen of how to do that poorly right you like you can mm-hmm. do it like i think if if you get romans 14 well it's it's a recipe for lack of a better word for how to live well in christ and how to live well with, with each other but then you can also kind of misinterpret it and get it wrong but anyway we we can get into those things but what when you read romans 14 what are you what are you noticing uh, having as a, a teenager <laughs> seen the movie uh, Peter and Paul. It was a TV miniseries, and Anthony Hopkins plays Peter. Uh, plays Paul. I'm sorry. Plays Paul. Oh, really? I did. I've never seen it. Uh, it's worth watching uh, because that image is, this is pre forever. or post Silence of the Lambs. Pre. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, this is pre Silence of the Lambs. So uh, yeah, Anthony Hopkins is Paul, um, and. Uh, Peter and the gang. Uh, this this is you know. There's that one scene where he's rebuking Peter for not eating with, for suddenly not eating with the uh, Roman Christians to yeah. only eating with the Jewish Christians, and he gets ticked off and <laughs> and uh, starts going off about this section, right? Um, oh, right. It's, it's uh, they kind of tie it together, but it's um, I think a really crucial. Uh, and long-winded way to say um, be sensitive to each other, mm. and also don't be oversensitive. Interesting. Okay, talk about that. Actually, that's like so. Well, well, I want to circle back to the be sensitive to yeah, each other because that's a good be sensitive good to suit. each other because um, uh, not everybody is at the same point in their journey. Right. Not everybody is at the same level of comfort with uh, their relationship to God. Right. Some people uh, are uh, content to say, uh, night God, and that's their good night prayers and done. Some people are on their knees on a hardwood floor mm. with hands folded for an hour and a half and, uh, and don't feel right if they're not in this position to mm. make this prayer. You know, Everybody's a little different. Everybody comes at it differently. Mm. And for different reasons. Some life experience. Who knows what. Someone told them something and they're stuck on it. Right. Or um, they just haven't encountered something else that helps expand their view. 
So be sensitive to that. Be aware of that. Mm. And um, you can't hit each other over the head to, uh, you know, help your idea get forwarded, right? You need to um, find people where they are, meet them where they are, listen to where they are, and then, and then okay, ah, oh, you know, and then maybe learn something new from them. Mm. Because maybe, uh, maybe there's some piece of it that you're going to um, add to how you go through your spiritual journey. But mm. it also could be that uh, they just needed someone like you to help them get to where they are, but in a kind way. Because it's not going to happen in the opposite of what Paul's talking about in a in an abrupt judge. He says, "Do not judge in a, yeah. in a judgmental way." That doesn't actually help people get to where they. No. Even if you think that someone needs to be at a certain level, which is not Romans four, not be, being Romans fourteen, getting getting them there doesn't. People don't get there through judgment, right? Like they don't, you know, through through human judgment, we can't do it. You know, we 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 love we love to judge. We're good at it. We're we well we we well uh, we're adamant about doing it. We're <laughs> adamant. Yeah, we are we are we are good at being in the habit of judging. Oh yeah, but are super terrible judgment. at like we're we're like, terrible judges. Terrible judges, <laughs> but good at making judgments. We are we will run right in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we are. I'm here, everyone. We're holding up the cards. <laughs> I'm know, here. It's okay. You've been one waiting. to ten <laughs> right away. We we don't wait. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, an easy example, right? So, um, you come into, you go to another church, mm. right? When you walk into other church, wherever that is, everyone's wearing suits, but you didn't. Mm. Or, uh, mm. some people are wearing suits. Some people are wearing sweatpants. Right. And so now, you know, your brain wants to... <laughs> Wants to make judgments to figure out what's going on, and uh, God says, "I don't care about any of that. I'm judging <laughs> the heart." Right. Right. Yeah. Which is uh, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest slap in the face. I just love that so much because um, I grew up with a, a mom who grew up in the South, and if you weren't wearing your best at church, oh my goodness, what have you done? Right. Uh, my own dad who I'm sure may or may not hear this, <laughs> and by you like that, I'm sure it also could, could or could not. <laughs> but uh, he, he will always tell you that he does his best work in his best clothes, so he's always wearing a suit, running around doing whatever he's doing. <laughs> but <laughs> mowing the lawn, he'll, he's like, whatever, he doesn't care. Uh, but, but yeah, some people believe they must, in order to show... Um, that they are Christian, mm. they will dress up. But at the same time, those same people are doing it because they, to them, it's a sign of respect, right? To to show up in your best yeah. clothes. And and Paul addresses that, like like if you're convinced, be convinced. It's like be convinced be about convinced. that. Like that's good. Like that conviction level is good. It's just about how how does that transfer or not transfer to somebody else? Right. Yeah. So then you'll. You could have somebody who comes to church, and maybe it's their first time, maybe it's their hundredth time. Who cares? But they show up in sweatpants, right? Right, and and they're there because they made it. That's a massive accomplishment. Yeah, and that's great. So everybody's at different points right, along the way. Yeah, and if you all match, you should have questions. And one. If you all match, what fun is that anyway? It's not. It's, you know, makes doesn't make for a community much fun if everyone looks and acts the same. B, yeah, I mean, there there's a sense of like, uh, yeah, if there's what's going on if if everyone does match because there's you know Paul. I mean, Paul like constantly, the Apostle Paul is constantly pointing to the the diversity and you, both the diversity and unity of the body, like yeah. the, that, and that the diversity is, like, well, the diversity is to be celebrated. He said, verse 2 in chapter 14, one person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. Let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. Right. For, why? For God has welcomed him. Right. And, and so, so, like, 
if you're gathering and someone eats meat, someone doesn't, and the, you know, these metaphors can, can kind of expand a little bit like in the clothing or, um, or if someone who, and he goes into talking about the one person esteems one day better than another, well, another right, esteems yeah. all days alike. And he's like, be convinced, but, and give, and he says, the one who observes the day observes it in honor, honor of the Lord, who eats in honor of the Lord, gives thanks to God, one who abstains. And he goes on, and none of us lives to himself, none of us dies to himself. We live to the, we, we, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. And so I like that Paul's always pointed, but like, like there's diversity in the body and that should be celebrated. But the unity in the body is not about being alike. It's about being able to, um, in some ways, defer to the other. Being like, okay, I, I am not going to, you know, um, I'm not going to say you get over, and I said this on Sunday, I'm not going to say you need to get over my thing. I, I will choose to get over your thing. Um, and I, I, I was thinking about this whole concept of, of the, the, the direction of power. Like, so, so in, in, the, in the Roman world, on the weak and the strong is a very mm. cultural thing. Um, weak always defer to strong. That, culturally, that's the, in Roman culture, that's what happened. The weak would defer to the strong. The strong could influence, the weak did not. And Paul, I, I just think it's so important that to, to just kind of, I said it on Sunday, but to remind, Paul flip-flops that. He says, the strong, you defer to the weak. Like, you, like, you're, like you're, you are to, in your, whatever influence you think you have, is kind of the idea, the, the, the strength, you defer to, to the one who you think is weak, right? That, uh, he's using these cultural terms not to say that people are actually weak, but he's he's trying. I think he's trying to switch the direction of power, to say strong defer to the weak instead of weak defer to the strong. I um, like to look at it too. Like, if you say you're so strong, prove it by prove it right by being able to also do this right, where this person feels that they or they're convicted to not eat meat, for example. Like, if they're convicted to not eat meat. And you're at their house, and that's okay, right? You, then that, right? That's what you do. Yeah. And so what? So what? If so, you're strong by by being able to do that too. Right. If you really, if you really think you're you're strong in faith, and I don't think he's being snarky, but I do think there is a sense of because he 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 is definitively using cultural terms. The weak and the strong are very Roman terms. Um, so he's definitively using cultural terms, but I think he's trying to point to the spiritual reality of like, if you think you're strong, then prove yourself by, by the way that you treat the weak, by the way that you, yeah. the, the, the power, the power only goes that direction. Cause I was thinking about this too. And if, you know, and I was thinking about how, like kind of the idea that this only works one way, meaning that, so if you and I, let's say, um, uh, well, if you and I are having a conversation and I say to you, well, Kirk, you have to defer to you have to defer to me because I'm the weaker brother, right? Like, and I ask you to, I ask you to make the change in order to meet me for abstaining from whatever mm -hmm. for celebrate. It doesn't work like it, the the scripture doesn't work that way. Um, it doesn't work when you are demanded or requested to change for another person. It only works when God demands a request for us to change in regard to another person. So it only works one way in that. Only the, the individual can say, not because they've been asked to, um, by anyone but God. God has asked them, you know, by the, by the scripture. But because we, the, the person in their heart is saying, I, I, will, I will not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Like, I will, it only works when, it doesn't work when it's requested of you. It only works when you offer it, right? It's not like a, um, I can't say to you, hey, I need you, to, I need you to defer to me because I'm the weaker brother. It only works when you offer it, not when it's requested. Um, so there's only one way for this to, to really, um, work. I did, I did think too, you know, there's, there's something to be, and I want to, I'd love to hear what you think about this. There actually, you said sensitive, which I think is a really good word because there is a, like, this is not one, it's not easy work to live, to live this way. Um, to be able to like be sensitive enough to understand enough, to discern enough to, you know, all that takes time to be able to understand another person to know where they're coming from to and not you don't have to get their whole story but to understand enough to be like okay i'm going to work to make sure that this is not an issue for us whatever the, yeah. the issue is which means that you, you can't move quickly in relationships you can't you know you can't um uh assume a lot you can't go you know th there's a lot you have to you have to kind of when you navigate relationships in romans 14 it's got to be much much slower 
you know, and and because there's a there's a real sense of like I'm going to know you, in order, for, me, not to be a hindrance to you. You know, like mm. for that that and he said, you know, Paul says later on, he's like, what kind of like why do you do this? Um, or at the end of fourteen. Oh, here it is. Sorry, Romans fourteen nineteen. Let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. So it's not just that we're deferring to each other for no reason. We're deferring to each other for peace and mutual upbuilding. Like, that's it's, it's encouragement, you know. So yeah. there's a cause to this. There's an end to this. It's not just so that we don't get in fights. Love your neighbor as yourself. Shocking. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, said in such a short way, but yeah. Here, right, yeah. Paul here is all this, it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for people who had trouble with the short version. <laughs> Here's, you want the expanded story? <laughs> the, it's the... the Full description with many comparisons, but yeah, that's so. Don't be overly sensitive. Yeah, well, yeah. Talk about that. You mentioned that before. So, what does it mean to be overly sensitive then? Right. So now, if you are the weaker in that relationship, why? Mm. And can can you be flexible? Hmm. Because maybe. I mean, it, this is, uh, requires self-examination, right? So you have to look at your... That's good. Why am I this way? Why have I chosen this way? Why have I made you know, this special or unique in my uh, life? Whatever this is, that's, uh, you know, now the hindrance in the relationship. <laughs> why is it a hindrance in the relationship? Mm. Why am I holding on to this thing? Maybe there's a great reason. And again, that goes back to the be, you know, be convicted by your conviction, right. whatever that yeah. is. Um, uh, or, or maybe not. Maybe you're just holding on to something old that doesn't need to be there anymore. Yeah. That's slowing you down or holding you back that you don't need. So that's good. But that takes, it's a moment of growth, which becomes a moment of strength, right? And yeah. then, so, um, there's a chance to grow in both directions. Mm. Strong or weak, doesn't matter. Either way, now you have to meet the other person to find this kind of equilibrium. Yeah, so so that's really, that, I, I like that because there's a sense of, hey, in order for us to mutual upbuild, for peace, but really to grow, it, it's, it's not just going to happen on my own. It's got to happen through me deferring to other people, but then also when people are deferring to me. Because I, I, also, I also think, I, and, and I, this is, it's not a hot take, but... I also think like there it's not like there are people who are strong and people who are weak. In a cultural sense in Rome, yes. But I think like we're strong in some areas and weak in others. Right? Everybody. Right? Everybody. You know, like there's there's places where there are places that I am definitively the weaker brother. Right, the weaker sibling. Um and I think it's in those so it's not like you, it's not like you graduate to the stronger sibling, right? You, I think there's we're always in some points weaker, we're always in some points stronger. It just depends on your our, kind of where we are in our faith, what we're going through, our season. Sometimes, so, and sometimes it's not both at the same time. Sometimes for a season we're just the weaker brother, the weaker sibling. Sometimes we're the stronger sibling, right? And and but but again, this is where the 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 body's a, a huge can be a huge gift as it takes each other to discern some of that to be like, man, I'm the weaker brother, and not that we. That we walk around and be like, you are a weaker brother, right? You are a weaker sibling. Oh boy, right. That, that kind of gets into what Paul's saying: don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. But, but just the idea of like, okay, like you know, this person's going through this thing. Like, we're for mutual building. I think I can support this person in this in, for the season. Like, so or that, sometimes you've been through that thing. Right. It's yeah. That's and you've really, come yeah. out on some other side, and you you can now offer guidance. And there is a strength in that. Being, yeah. I've been through it, so I can in this I can. You know, so in it, it you I appreciate the perspective of like, this is one, another one of those times where it's like, man, I wish I would, I wish I would have did this before the sermon. Or I could have used like the sensitive, not oh, oversensitive. That's sorry. Really, it's really good. It's just well, it's a really good way of thinking of it of like, okay, don't be sensitive to the other person, but then internally, don't don't be oversensitive about this, like because I, I think you could, if you observed, like, just using Paul's language, if yeah. you observed a day. But then you said, you're not a real Christian unless you observe that day. Paul's saying, who cares what days you observe? But then if you use that as, as a means to say, well, you've got to observe this day. Um, and the fact that you don't observe that day, man, that, that really grinds my gears. That's, you're being a little oversensitive about that, that very thing. It's too, you know. Um, so you're right, that, that not being oversensitive part, that, that's, 
that's a whole part of it too, you know. Uh, that's just a good, uh, just additional perspective of okay, how do we, how do we live in mutual upbuilding, right? There's 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 got to be a both hand. It's not just. So uh, I experienced exactly that <laughs> scenario uh, as a teenager in our high school. I went to a, a private Christian high school, um, and part of that uh, experience involved being uh, in a choir as anyone who can uh, tell from my amazing mellow tones that I was a fantastic singer but the the, the choir, you joined the choir because the choir went on tour right so you got well, to get out of classes for yeah. a couple of days and go, go someplace it's wisdom right there right so uh, the one time the choir went on tour to uh, exotic long island wow yeah uh, uh, and we went to exotic long island to uh, perform, <laughs> perform at uh, other uh, uh, Christian Reform churches, right? Oh, it was okay. a Christian yeah. Reform uh, school, so Christian Reform churches. Uh, and so while we were there uh, singing along, uh, we had a Saturday night concert. Next morning, we're going to perform also for a Sunday morning service, but we're we're staying in the homes of. Many oh, of the okay. parishioners, they've taken us in, which was very thoughtful. Um, mostly older couples. Um, and some of them, the majority of them, are uh, absolutely strict about do no work on the Sabbath. Mm. Nothing on the Sabbath. And uh, that was kind of awesome because uh, uh, no one's turning a car on. No one's turning the TV on. No one's turning the radio on. No one's turning the lights on. Really? It's almost like a they, Jewish Shabbat. It's like Shabbat. Like, almost to that intensity level. You walk to the service, you walk back, you read the paper at home, and that is all. And maybe go back to a second service in the afternoon. Wow. And um, as a teenager, that's super fun. That sounds that sounds thrilling. Oh yeah, woo! It was a great so you time. Had to kind of. It was really funny for the families, the, the kids that were at these homes where it was a uh, lockdown basically <laughs> for for the day. The experience was kind of shocking. So yeah, th this was uh, a perfect example of uh, some hold the day holier than others, right? Uh, yeah. Whoa! Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now you do too. And uh, like it or not, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So uh, I hope you didn't want a hot breakfast, right? That's, that's, <laughs> that ain't happening either. <laughs> yeah. You get what you get. You get what you get, and you smile and say thank you. I'm I love Apple Jacks, and uh, that's all. Yeah. Wow. And that, and I think that's the you know, the one of the issues, I think. Maybe Paul was facing, but I think I think after two thousand years of church history, we have, the church has faced this as well as not that. Well, no, I was going to say not that people divide over apple jacks, but 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 I mean, like you know, there have been plenty of instances in church history that I'm not going to point to because I don't have anything ready. But but there have been plenty of instances where there have been splits over not apple jacks, but over uh, Sabbath rules or over yeah, this or over sure. that word or over you know and and. And that's why there's so many churches on one street, right here yeah, in town. Yeah, yeah. Right. And and it's and Paul saying, well, listen, like most of the time, you be convinced, but most of the time you can hang out in the house of someone who's practicing the Sabbath, and that's okay. And then, you know, like the, the, there's there's all sorts of ways that we can be um, in unity and worship together, even if we don't fully agree on all the the secondary doctrinal stuff. Right. Like 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 and and by the way, if you don't agree. A, that's normal. B, work it out. Like, work, work it out in such a way not that we would figure out, okay, well, I'm going to agree on this part, you're going to agree on this part. But, like, no, I'm going to make I'm gonna make room for you. Yeah. You know? So, I'm going to, if, if I celebrate the Sabbath in that way, I'm going to make room for you to, to, you know, celebrate it with me even if you're going to do it differently. You know, there, yeah. there's, all these secondary issues need to remain couched in their secondary position. Um, we love to bring them to the front, to the to the top, you know, and, and they just, and Paul's saying, listen, they just don't belong there. Right. You know? So, all right, well, I think, again, we have solved and completely exegeted 
in its entirety, Romans 14. Oh, I thought you were just... Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? Oh, no, that's great. Let's go with that. <laughs> in a way that, I ha- that, I've, uh, that we have not completely executed or... Uh, Fully understood Romans 14. Not that we haven't, but, but you know, there's a lot to that Love chapter. Your well, it, 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 be sensitive, but not oversensitive. Be sensitive to the others. Yes. Don't be oversensitive yourself. Ooh, good. Oh, let's stick. I love that. That's good. So that's that's the, the uh, model for tonight. Yeah, that's a really good way to think about Romans 14. And do it to for mutual upbuilding, which means love your neighbor. Like, love your neighbor. So really, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's really it. Um, all right. Well, we will. Uh, we are about to finish the Book of Romans in the next couple weeks, because uh, this was technically Romans fourteen and fifteen. I snuck fifteen in there because there's this part. May the God of hope and you know give you endurance. So Romans sixteen is all the conclusion stuff, which is the last chapter in a couple weeks that we'll handle, and that's that's it for Romans. I like to imagine that there were a room full of people sitting around listening to the entire book being read at once, and that's free time. <laughs> that's amazing. To That's, imagine that people had the time to sit around and listen to this whole thing at once. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to... Hey, we got this letter from this and guy named Paul. We have been dragging it out for weeks. <laughs> months. <laughs> months. It's months. Months. And Paul's just like, chapter one, chapter two. I don't know. He didn't even say that. Just, no, it's true. He just went... I have just, these thoughts. He's like, hey, I'm Paul. Listen up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, we'll finish uh, the series up months later. <laughs> <laughs> but we will finish it up nonetheless. Thank you so much Thank for you. Uh, this podcast, and we will see you next time. See you next time.